I had been traveling for some time among the people of the Miskatonic Valley in search of certain genealogical data. And due to the remote, devious, and problematical nature of my course, deemed it necessary to employ a bicycle despite the lateness of the season. And I was driven one afternoon in November by an oncoming storm of such chilling copiousness that any shelter was preferable to exposure. At the end of an apparently abandoned road, which I had chosen as the shortest cut to Arkham, I soon found myself lost in the wilderness. It appeared I would be overtaken by the impending storm at a point far from any town with no refuge. Had I not stumbled upon this antique and repellent house in the middle of nowhere, I had somehow taken it for granted the house was abandoned, yet I was not so sure. As I surveyed this quaint apartment, I felt a strong aversion. Just what it was that I feared I could not define, but something seemed redolent of unhallowed age, unpleasant crudeness, and of secrets which should be forgotten. What interested me was the uniform air of archaism, as displayed in every visible detail. Most of the houses in this region I had found rich in relics of the past, but here the antiquity was curiously complete. Had the furnishings been less humble, the place would have been a collector's paradise. The 
Anziques of the Congo. They believed by eating human flesh and blood, they could live forever. Catchy in the rain, be ya? I apologized for entering his home in this manner, and explained that I was on my way to Arkham and could not continue on account of the oncoming storm. That's all right, young sir. New pace is scarce around here. Ain't had much to cheer me up lately. As the strange man rambled on, it struck me to ask him how he came by so rare a book as the Regnum Congo. I felt a certain hesitancy in speaking of it, but my curiosity overmastered my vague fear. The man answered freely. Ah, uh, that Africa book. Got that from Captain Ebenezer Holt back in 68, before he was killed in the war. The name Ebenezer Holt caused me to look up sharply. I'd encountered it in my work, but no record since the Revolution, almost 200 years ago. He's on a sailor merchant man for years. Picked up all sorts of queer stuff in every port. I was up to the house once and saw this. And I relished the pictures. So we'd give it up on a trade. Queer how pictures can set a mind to thinking. I'll show you the best of That feller being chopped up. Gives me a tickle. Every time I look at him, I got to keep on looking at him. See where the butcher cut off his feet? That's his head over there on the table with the arm next to it. There, sit still. What's ailing you? Queer how a craving gets a hold on you. And killing sheep in the market was a lot more fun after looking at the pictures, but give me a craving for meat, I couldn't raise nor buy. They say meat makes blood and flesh. It gives you a new life. I wondered, couldn't a man live longer and longer if more is the same? shriek, but merely shut my eyes. A moment later came the titanic thunderbolt of thunderbolts, bringing the oblivion which alone saved my mind. <laughs> 